This is the AM Show. Welcome back. And we kickstart our conversations with an interesting one. He's a young man and he contested uh, to become member of parliament or at least parliamentary candidate for the MPP in Insa. Wim didn't get the nod, but he's been doing some amazing things at the Ghana Library Authority. And today we host him for a conversation. He is the CEO. Hey, Fatsian is his name. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm okay. Good. I'm okay. Good. Politics in Asia. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I, like, I like to, you know, get on this trajectory with him when we talk because it's always... Uh, but you're still in there. Let, let, let's start with um, the Ghana Library Authority and basically what you do. I'm sure there are some people who still are not so conversant with what you do at the, at the authority. Okay, so the Library Authority is a state agency uh, that was established sometime in 1950. And over the last over 70 years, its work has been to establish, equip, maintain, and manage public libraries in Ghana. You know, there are different types of libraries. So we have public libraries, school libraries, academic libraries, specialized libraries. Mm -hmm. But the law establishing the library authority focuses on public school libra uh, public libraries. Of course, we do provide technical support to other ministries and agencies with respect to their specialized libraries. We also provide support to school libraries. And of course, now with the introduction of technology, we leverage on technology to be able to also make sure that we reach a lot more Ghanaians with knowledge resources. But over the last uh, 70 plus years, uh, the models have always been to, you know, uh, enter a community, establish a brick and mortar environment, equip it with the relevant uh, knowledge resources so that people within that enclave can be able to have access to the resources in there. And that is what, you know, we do at the Library Authority. I see. And that, that's quite, you know, a vast area yeah. uh, to look at. And, and that brings me to my next question, out of curiosity. What was the state of the library system when you took office? This was what, 2017? 2017. 2017. 2018, January, that's when I assumed office. And um, of course, um, so the library authority, as I did mention, you know, of course, we have to make sure that we uh, provide a lot more footprint across the country so that the Ghanaian citizens can have access to to the, uh, the facilities and the resources in there. Uh, in 2017, when you know, we took over and handed over notes and everything was done, we had 61 public libraries in Ghana. Uh, 61. 61. And out of the 61, um, out of the 60, of all the 61 libraries, the books on the shelves of these 61 libraries was just around 349,000. But just suppose that with what was the situation in 1981, because I just want you to have a bill of uh, uh, comparative assessment to really appreciate it. So did you just mention 1981? Is 1981. That I 81. mentioned 1981, we had 36 libraries in Ghana. Okay. On the shelves of the 36 libraries, we had 1 million, over 1 million 40,000 books. Fast forward to 2017, we had increased the network of public libraries to 61, but the books had reduced to less than 400,000. So, oh, wow. So the libraries had increased, yeah. but the books, had, what you would go to a library for? Yes, had diminished. So there was very low patronage with respect to people's use of the resources at the various libraries. There was the non-existence of uh, internet infrastructure. There was no computers in most of our libraries uh, that, you know, that, that, that were set up. What we have done over the last uh, few years is to be able to, of course, increase the footprint because you cannot have over 260 districts and municipalities and only be operating 61 public libraries. So the government, within the framework of the 2018-2030 strategic plan, which had proposed that we should have about 540 libraries by uh, 2030, we decided to go an aggressive um, you know, strategy to be able to uh, you know, devise different strategies to be able to expand the footprint. Today, we have added 72 new libraries to the network, so we're managing 133 uh, libraries under, under the Ghana Library Authority. Books on the shelves, which had declined to less than 400,000. Today, we are hitting almost 2 million books on the shelf for public library. We've are, these, are these evenly distributed? I mean, it may not be exactly that 10,000 books per library, but is there some evenness in the distribution so that it's not lopsided? One has 50,000, another one has 2,000. What's, what's the Of course, of the, depending on the size of a library will determine the number of books in there. So a, a, a typical you know, library will usually have maybe about 5,000 to 10,000 5, books. 
But then when we have a bit of a mega library, like the one we have at Kagukudi, which has about 25,000 books. You know, when you come to Accra Central, we have about- Which one? Is that, is that the one from Gold House? Gold House, going yes. Going towards the Zenith Bank? Exactly, exactly. So the size really determines uh, the number of resources that are made available. And also, if we look at the dynamics with respect to the use of the, re of the resources, because there are some libraries that you have a lot more kids patronizing, which means that you provide a lot more children-friendly materials, whilst some libraries had a lot more adult patronage. So you rather give them a lot more adult content uh, to meet their, their, their needs. And so when it comes to the footprint, this is what we have done. When it comes to the um, resources with respect to the book resources that, of course, everybody expect to enter a library and find, we've managed to increase it from less than 400,000 to uh, now almost 2 million. The other component is, of course, technology. And with technology, what we have been able to do is that, yes, of course, we understand that it's quite difficult for us to reach every household, but through the use of technology, we can be able to give Ghanaians access to resources. And so we launched uh, the Ghana Library app, which is available on both uh, Play Store and uh, App Store. And with the Ghana Library app, uh, once you are within the geographical location of Ghana, the confines of Ghana, you can download the app and have access to some of the resources that we've put in there. And so if you're a parent, I mean, you are watching us, you can actually even try it right now. Um, not only do we have e-books, but we also have audio books, and we have also video tutorials. So video to you know, Ghana Education Service, you know, when they launched the Ghana Learning TV, just like you have the Joy Learning Channel, they, do, they did record uh, some uh, tutorial videos. We've uploaded all of these videos on the platform. So if, you are, if, if your kids need extra tuition, maybe on social studies or mathematics, you can actually go on the app, look at the class level of your child, uh, the topic or the lesson uh, number, and be able to offer them opportunity to assess the resource. So this has also uh, been done. So beside the, you know, this opportunity to use the app to assess resources, of course, there's also the library space itself. When people come in, are they able to have access to connection, internet? Are they able to have access to you know, digital devices? What's the, what's the status of that? So with that, we've, we've, we've procured over 1,000 computers that we've shared across uh, most of our libraries across the country. And under the Ghana government digital strategy, we've also expanded uh, internet connectivity to almost half of the libraries that we have across, uh, across the country. And so with these computers within the library space, another significant role we are able to play is to be able to uh, allow schools within the communities that these libraries are located to be able to use our resources to teach the children ICT. You know, most of our schools, of course, uh, they're supposed to write exams in ICT, but they do not have computers at, at their disposal. So with this, like, sort of community hubs, you know, you are able to leverage on the library's uh, resources with respect to computers. And, you know, teachers bring in the kids and they're able to use uh, the computers at our disposal to, of course, uh, teach the kids. Beside that, you also have adults that comes in for research purposes using the computers and the internet resources. Of course, we how, also... How many of such do you get, let's say, in a year, in a month? How many of those do you get? Um, do you have any... With respect to... I mean, those who may be, may be coming for research purposes, for example. Okay, so... I'm sure you are keeping tabs. You want yes. to know who is coming for yeah. what, because it will also let you know what we should be focusing on, where we should be honing skills, yeah. what people need, and then trying to meet those needs, right? Yes, so across the country, we've seen a significant interest, interest, uh, increase in patronage. So we used to record uh, around 350,000 visits annually in 2017, 2016. Today, we are almost at 1.8 million visits annually, uh, which means that a lot more people are visiting the library and using the resources. Then you come to the number of kids, so you have about 80% of, of, of patronage being children, and you have 20% being adult population patronizing our libraries. And so you, 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 you find a significant number of people that are using our libraries being uh, kids between, of course, uh, the ages of uh, 18 and below. And they form about 80%. And so if you have uh, about 20%, that's sort of the, across the country, the average number of adults. And these are the people uh, that are usually using some of our resources, uh, of course, with, us, with respect to the computers for their research and self-learning. Right. And, and within the spaces that we've set up the uh, ICT corners or the tech corners, we also leverage on that to be able to also allow Ghanaians to participate in massive open online course programs. 
And so, you know, we, we you recall that when we had the last interview, I told you about the partnership we had with uh, Commonwealth of Learning that allowed Ghanaians to enroll on uh, Udemy and Coursera to undertake some of these micro certificate programs. You know, at our various libraries, um, we offer the opportunity for, for, for the youth and, and, and adults alike to be able to have a, uh, use our computers to assess some of these uh, resources. So you've said a lot about initiatives, yeah. right? Key initiatives from the Ghana Library app, which allows people to come on board. By the way, is it free? Yes, it's free. So, it's free. so just, all the person has to do is download it's it. It's download. And the good thing is that, you know, the major telcos, Telecel and MTN have all zero rated it, which means that it doesn't actually take charges from your data that you have. Okay. And it is on iOS. It is on the Android. Android as well. Yeah. Okay. That's the App Store and Android. Right. But I'm curious, after all these initiatives, after all these policies, mm -hmm. what has been the impact? People often say that in Ghana... Um, not too many. The masses may not be so concerned about picking a book or going online and reading a book from cover to cover, absorbing that. What has been the impact of these, these initiatives on different fronts, but also specifically in respect of people? Are you seeing more numbers? Yes. You know, like I did mention, um, when I took over, for example, library patronage was around 350,000 or so. But today... Per year? Yes, per year. But today we are recording like almost 2 million, 1.8 million to 2 million averagely. And this is, uh, this is, this is, this is, this is, um, this is the case because of the investment that the government has made into, into public library networks across the country. Because you know what? If I want access to some resources and I not have the money to be able to buy the book, the, the option for me is to go into the library space to be able to make use of, 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 of the materials that are available. When we introduced the, uh, the Coursera and the Udemy platforms, for example, we had over 50,000 people signing up for those programs. Some people today... But these are programs that ordinarily... I mean, I've taken courses from yeah. Coursera, EDX, yes. among others. Yes. These are... Things that people can do without necessarily coming to you. Yes, but right. you know, for you to get your, so you know, you needed to pay for it to be able to. Okay, so download. you subsidize. You don't pay because Commonwealth of Learning have taken off the cost. Okay, so those who go through your route, mm, yes. in terms of the certification, they exactly. don't have to pay the, don't have the little to. sums they would have paid. It's a lot of money if you're paying forty dollars for a course. Well, I know. I mean, there were some I took you. You were looking at fourteen. Yes, yes. So, I mean, but it's it's. It's a lot of money, thanks, yeah, to, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks to the exchange rate. <laughs> it's a lot of money. I get, I get, I get your so, point. So we've managed to allow people, and what I, the point I want to make is that people that benefited from the program, some of them have either gotten promotions at their workplaces, they've gained new skills. Some people are actually working remotely. Some of them have gained promotion. Yes, some people are also working remotely for companies across uh, the ocean that because they have certain skills, because some people are doing remote uh, user experience design. Some people are doing, you know, some project micro uh, project management for other companies. Some people are operating really some other areas that even when they were taking the course, they had no idea, they had no idea. About, right. about what they were doing. And so that's really uh, an impact, especially for the adult population when it comes to uh, scaling, that they manage to leverage on this platform to acquire. Uh, of course, parents' access to also, parents' ability to buy, you know, a, a lot more storybooks of the, for their kids. Once they have access to our libraries, they are now able to come and borrow. I mean, when you go pass by the airport library, maybe use that route, you can check it out. Parents come over the weekend, they borrow a bunch of books, take home for two, three weeks, you know, get their children to exhaust them, and then they bring them back. And that's really a cost burden that has been reduced because if, if, if there was no existence, you'd probably be going to the bookshops you know, and to buy, buy, all to buy a lot more books. Right. And so that's, 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 that's really um, an impact that has been made you know, uh, for those... Let's, let, let's talk about, I mean, in, in some jurisdictions, I've seen book barrows, wheelbarrows yes. with books, and others, mobile, portable libraries. You have a mobile library service. Tell us about that. Yes, so across the country, we have 11 vans. 
uh, that are attached. They are vans? Yes, they are okay. vans. So right. they are attached to some of our libraries uh, within the regions, and they're able to commute into, into, uh, into communities with our libraries. But it's really demand driven. And so if you are a community and you're interested in benefiting from the service of the, of, 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 of the mobile library service, the van is able to come in there. And the good thing is that we do not only go uh, with, 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 um, with, with books, but we also go with tablets and, and computers, so laptops. And we, we allow schools within the communities that we visit on this uh, mobile library outreach to be able to also use the laptops to teach the ICT courses. Because, you know, some schools, of course, don't have access to computers. And so if we are going with books, we want them to have the same experience that you would have otherwise had, you know, from our static library environment. And that is also a critical service that, you know, that's what the UN Public Service awarded us, you know, in 2021 on, on the And I'm sure of. this will also help those communities that may not necessarily, because it's always about trying to reach those who perhaps are most deprived, exactly. right? Exactly. So exactly. that they can also be a part of the, the, the rest of the system yes. and not be deprived of certain e benefits. Exactly. And, you know, for us, even the goal is that we, every single public library should even have a mobile library attached to it because, you know... Um, in, in, in I think that will even uh, excite people. Oh, yes. When, when, even if you know there's a library and people are not coming, when they see the van going around and maybe someone picks a book, and someone tells a story, oh, I love that book. Yes. Then by word of mouth, yes. interest yes. is, is yes. developed. But on, on the back of that, I'd like to find out, we have a National Development Planning Commission, and sometimes uh, it appears even what they plan is not affected by the political parties. But I'm curious, do we ever factor in public libraries and stuff like that into our development planning? Unfortunately, we have not, as a country, been very good at it. You know, um, if you look at it, uh, even the education strategic plan that had been developed over the years, until, you know, when Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe was developing the 2018-2030 strategic plan, Ghana has never made any concrete attempt to even incorporate the delivery of library resources into our education strategy. Mm. But today, we have you know, at least a target within the education strategic plan to be able to achieve for, for Ghana when it comes to uh, you know, the footprint of public libraries in the country. In Ghana, we never had we had the opportunity to even uh, political parties make a statement on the development of public libraries. But we are glad for the commitment of His Excellency, the President, uh, and the Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Ubaumiya for being committed to you know, making sure that Ghanaians have access to public library uh, in the country. And today, His Excellency the Vice President uses our achievement uh, within the public library space to be able to make a case to Ghanaian people how well this government has, has performed. Never has it been the case for any other political party in Ghana to even be able to do that because it has never been part of the But, but this, this should not even be political, right? It, yes, it's, but it's a national, it's a, yes, it should but, be a national drive rather yes, than a political. Of course, but you know, national, uh, national policies and programs are driven by politicians that we vote into power. And so if politicians haven't demonstrated enough commitment to be able to expand access to these knowledge hubs, then it's a problem. But we are glad that, you know, uh, today, we've seen that commitment uh, coming. We've seen uh, the new Patriotic Party making a commitment to be able to support and improve public library access uh, in the country, supporting the Ghana Library Authority to expand from 61 to 133 digital library infrastructure, computers being, born, being bought and, and, and distributed across public libraries in Ghana, mm. investing a lot in acquisition of books. Books are the most expensive resource. <laughs> if I tell you that the books on this shelf might cost one million, you will be amazed how expensive these books uh, resources are, especially textbooks. Very expensive. But we are glad that we've gotten that commitment to be able to do that for the people of Ghana. Okay. Uh, before we go, I'd just like to, and, and as you give your final words, they, it's always said that legacy the quality of a leader is not just what the leader does, but the fact that the leader puts systems in place so that even if he's not there, the system works. Take out the politics yeah. and the fact that you could be retained, whether your party wins or not, or you could be you know, set aside if another party comes to power. What, is, what would be your legacy? What have you left so that no matter what, this will be a trajectory that will continue? Those, those are my final okay, bits. Thank you very much. What, Briefly on that. Yes, what we have done at Ghana Library Authority is actually, the, what I'm very proud about is the system we've put in place. 
the key fundamental thing you need to do within the public library service is the development of your scheme of service that allowed you to be able to bring in the right personnel with the right skills and be able to offer them the continuous professional development so that they can be able to contribute optimally to the delivery of the service for which you are mandated to do by law. Now, at Ghana Library Authority, we have managed to develop a new scheme of service 2021. And within that scheme of service, we've managed to also bring in new professional groupings. So when I went to Ghana Library Authority, there was no existence of a human resource department. There was no estate department. When an agency law makes it mandatory for it to, uh, to establish public libraries. Right. Today, we have an estate department that, has, that is leading the, the footprint expansion. Okay. We've managed to also, within uh, the framework, also bring in the needed skills uh, invest a lot in continuous professional development. So for me, I think my legacy will be the investment that I've been able so to So whoever make. takes over, the, the, the blueprint is there. The to blueprint follow. has been laid down perfectly. The right personnel are in place to be able to make sure that... To execute the agenda. To execute that. We have to go, but I just saw this comment. I feel I wouldn't do service to this person if I don't read it. He says, it's Emmanuel Preckle. He says, I want to learn Python programming on Udemy, but I can't afford it. I'm hearing it's free at the Ghana Library. How can I benefit? So he is, should, is that yes. are all of these available? Yes, it's available. So he should just uh, go on our website and, and send us an email and they'll respond and hook him up. All right. So Emmanuel Preckle, go to the Ghana Library Authority's website. Library.gov.gh. Right. Send an email and they'll take it from there. Library.gov.gh. Hey, Fatio, thank, thank you for coming. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you for joining the thank conversation. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. And that is the CEO of the Ghana Library Authority, Hey, Fatio. He joined me for a conversation. Before we come through with AM Exclusive, let me tell you about this year's Compu Ghana Cashback. Oh, yeah, you want some cashback, right? It's been named Prime Cashback Season, and it's packed with incredible deals and exciting prizes. Loaded. Now, this Prime Cashback, Compu Ghana is bringing you exclusive discounts, prime savings, and awesome surprises when you shop products from any of their branches nationwide. You can find products from your favorite brands, no matter what they are. Samsung, LG, TCL, HP, Lenovo, Dell, Mydea, Nasco, Techno, Infinix, Itel, Huawei. All of them are in there. Visit any of the CompuGhana branches nationwide and enjoy exclusive discounts on all products. Now note, CompuGhana has a wide, vast range of IT-related products, mobile phones and electronic products, such as laptops, printers, desktops, tablets, television sets, uh, fridges, home theaters, air conditioners, gas cookers, and more. What's more amazing is that this year's Prime Cashback with CompuGhana has got great prizes with instant gifts and cash prizes for your shopping experience. So, when you shop at CompuGhana this season, be on the lookout for the surprise team, answer a question correctly, and win instant cash and gifts. You deserve this opportunity too. Rush to CompuGhana now. The promo runs from now till December. Uh, visit CompuGhana.com or call them on this number, 0302-752-020. That is 0302-752-020 for more information. Now, when we return from our break, it is AM exclusive time. And we're going to be having a conversation with Mrs. Tucci Ivoi. She is CEO of the Ghana Commodity Exchange. Our very own Sweetie Abochi will be on that beat, but right after the break.